Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and the question of the day is the combination of viral nucleic acid plus the viral capsid is known as what? And answer A, capsomers. If you would take a look at this picture, uh, you would see adenovirus here. Uh, usually such viruses would infect uh, eukaryotic cells and uh, this is about how um, virus that cause flu would look like. And you would see that uh, this uh, outer layer of this virus, which is made of proteins, uh, which we call capsid, uh, is made of small units, which we call capsomers. And these capsomers would represent uh, proteins, and usually these uh, capsomers would be associated by hydrogen bounding or would have uh, just like lock a key mechanism where uh, some proteins would have a positive charge, other would have negative charge and uh, just like uh, say uh, magnets would uh, self-assemble and also would easily self-disassemble when such a virus would penetrate a cell. So we wouldn't see covalent bounding between capsomers, but within one capsomer, uh, of course, amino acids would be connected uh, through the covalent bounding. Answer B, envelope, uh, we would see sometimes around this uh, capsid. Uh, this is going to be a double lipid layer that would be usually acquired by the virus when virus would leave a cell. So cell would die and virus would take a lipid layer of the uh, original cell where it replicated along with many proteins that associated with that cell. So it helps virus to avoid immune system of the organism because it uh, pretends to be uh, self. And this explains why sometimes it is very hard uh, to fight these viral diseases because these viruses pretend uh, to be uh, self uh, cells uh, that is uh, normal for our organism and uh, our immune system wouldn't recognize them as uh, foreign uh, particles or foreign cells. And uh, phage, answer C, uh, if you take a look at this picture, uh, this is bacteria phage. Or just phage, as you see, it is much more complex uh, than uh, virus that infects um, eukaryotic cells. And this virus would infect uh, prokaryotic cells, consists of many parts. And I hope one day we would be able to assemble nano machines or nano robots uh, using this blueprint uh, for uh, future development of the nano robots that uh, would allow us to cure many genetic disorders. So now we left with only two answers, uh, D and E. So prophage uh, sounds very uh, alike as FH and basically prophage is just uh, so imagine that this is bacterial cell this is our phage here and here we have circular DNA of the bacteria and this phage would inject its own uh, DNA. It can be double-stranded DNA, it can be single-stranded DNA, it can be single-stranded RNA or double-stranded RNA. But anyway, uh, double-stranded DNA would be made and uh, this double-stranded uh, DNA that represent uh, genome of the phage would be integrated in the genome uh, of the bacteria. So now we call this 
prophage. This is genome of the uh, virus of the bacteriophage integrated in the uh, genome of the bacteria. And this bacteria may divide multiple times and uh, all its progeny uh, may also contain this prophage. And uh, only later this uh, prophage uh, that is going to be in sleep state may uh, be expressed and uh, would go into the lytic stage. And this stage we call lysogenic. So uh, basically uh, once again this uh, bacteriophage uh, may go into the lytic stage and uh, new uh, bacteriophages would be produced. And of course uh, in many cases uh, bacteria would be killed and would release hundreds and uh, sometimes thousands of the bacteriophages. So as many bacteriophages as a bacteria has resources to produce. And as you see, the correct answer is answer D. The combination of viral nucleic acid and viral capsid we call nucleocapsid. And basically uh, you see capsid here and if we add DNA or RNA inside we are going to get a nucleocapsid and this is uh, this capsomer residues that make capsid uh, associated with uh, DNA or as I said it can be RNA double stranded single stranded so uh, now we will call this a nucleocapsid and the last remark would be did you ever think about uh, forces that uh, uh, drive uh, this DNA into the capsid and actually there are many forces uh, as you know on the overall uh, DNA or RNA is uh, negatively charged so have a negative charge uh, for every base. Now imagine that capsomer units that make capsid uh, would be positively charged from inside then uh, we would have strong association of the RNA or DNA with this uh, capsomer units of the capsid. Other forces that drive this um, DNA or RNA inside of the uh, capsid would be uh, proteins uh, that uh, work like molecular motors using ATP and also as you see negative uh, charge would be self-repelling so this allows this um, RNA or DNA take uh, the whole space inside because uh, by itself uh, this RNA or DNA would be self-repelling. And also other forces would be uh, such as uh, hydrogen bounding. If you would take uh, DNA of the, any eukaryote uh, you would find that most of the weight of the double-stranded DNA would be not DNA itself but uh, of the proteins associated with DNA uh, such as histones for example. And as you know histones have also positive charge that's why uh, histones would be so strongly associated with double-stranded or single-stranded DNA and also scientists made uh, different uh, experiments just taking these uh, capsomers uh, subunits mixing with naked uh, DNA and they also have found strong affinity between DNA and this uh, capsomer subunits uh, giving us information 
what the forces are behind a self-assembly of the nuclear capsid. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.